Hey Scrappy Peeps! My video today is for simple stories using the Kissing Booth collection with Valentine's coming up and this being a Valentine's collection. Of course, I had a scrap about me and my guy. Although these pictures aren't from Valentine's, they were just a random day that we went out to brunch and I just liked how we looked in the pictures. I printed them out from my Instax printer. I don't use that often enough, so I'm trying to make more of an effort. You've been watching me flip through the papers in the collection and I brought in this wood grain. It is one of the sides from a paper in the Snap Basics pack. This side is called Hickory, the other side is a cream grid. And then I'm gonna show you really quickly with my Caterpillar Pro how I'm just cutting some wedges out of a whole bunch of papers, but I'm only showing you this real quick because it's a repetitive thing, just cutting a bunch of wedges from all the papers. And I prefer to cut standing when I'm doing so much cutting. So I took my Caterpillar Pro back to the counter that I stand at and I just cut some more wedges. But before I put them on, I decide that I want to splatter some ink on this background. And I did try mixing some pinks, but they weren't really gonna show up. So I ended up just using the Studio Calico White. And before I go any further, I wanted to let you know that the rest of this process video is going to seem more like a quick time lapse and that's for two reasons. One, it's a quite simple design and I just didn't want it to be so repetitive and lasting for a long time. And two, I've been trying to keep my process videos on the shorter side. I really love long room tours, but when it comes to process videos, I feel that we don't have tons of time to devote to watching them. So I want to give like a quicker burst of inspiration. This design doesn't have anything really involved technique wise. It's just a lot of repeating the same element. So that's why I've sped this one up quite a bit. So all those random wedges, I didn't do any measuring at all. I just cut higgly piggly and here what I'm doing is placing them in a circle because I want to have my photos which are pretty small on those instax but and I don't want to get lost in all this paper layerness so I'm making them the center focus point and the wedges are just going all the way around them and the strategy is just to distribute the lights and the darks the pinks and the black and whites, you know, I don't want pink next to pink, white next to white, black next to black. You get the idea. Contrast is the key for this sort of design because otherwise it's gonna look like a hot mess. But making sure there's good contrast between the different wedges, also making sure that the colors and the lights and darks are balanced and giving it some resting spots. You'll see here, I'll be introducing areas that are not paper. That's gonna bring some cohesion to the randomness. In addition to all the pattern paper that I cut up, I was attracted to the border scallop sticker in the sticker sheet. Adding that to my layers is gonna break up all the angularity there and it's just really pretty gluing things down and snipping the excesses from the wedges, it's making it start to take shape. And you can see that I'm leaving some spaces. I've got a bigger one on the left-hand side. I sort of had that in mind all along because I wanted to put my title in the background. And then I've balanced that out with a few other open spaces, open wedges uh, throughout. So let me trim off the last few pieces and we're gonna go into some stitching. I used a regular weight thread and I just went straight down the middle of each wedge. I'm using a light pink thread and you can see here that it's almost like when you cut a pie and you go from one side to the other and then you, you just go across and across and across. But with stitching, I don't stop and cut the thread and then start again. I just lift up the presser foot, flip the layout around, and go back the other way. And you can see that I've been lifting the wedges out of the way because I want to go down the middle. I don't want anything to get caught where it shouldn't. 
all the stitching took about an hour so it is a bit of a time investment but you know what I just absolutely adore stitching on layouts and uh, <laughs> I jokingly put on Instagram that you know I tell myself simplify your process and then I go and do all the stitching <laughs> And this is the part that took the longest. I decided to do a very messy back and forth stitch to fill in three of the open areas. I was inspired by Mel Davis. She has her Instagram is meldavis.nz. She had a layout that was on a wood grain and she had a heart and it was filled with an ombre effect of pink to red stitching back and forth, back and forth. And I just fell in love and I knew I wanted to incorporate that into this layout. Okay, as mesmerizing as it is to watch someone stitching, let's get on with this. Here's what the back of the layout looks like. I put score tape all around and I'm covering it with a really thin piece of just plain white paper to protect the back so it doesn't snag. And here's what the front ends up looking like. I'm just going to ruffle up those edges to give it more dimension. And you can see how the stitching came out. Of course, all that misting I did was wasted, so I'm adding more to it now. When I was stitching, it basically just flaked off. This is what I planned for my title. Just a simple XOXO because it was big and just cute with the hearts inside the O's, but also it blends in to the background a bit rather than being, say, a black and white title that would really stand out, and that's not what I wanted for this. The pictures, I wanted them to pop a bit more. Here I'm auditioning some papers, and I settle for one of the dark ones. It's the one with flowers. If you've seen many of my videos and hear me talk, I am not a pink and flowery kind of girl. But I fell in love with the Kissing Booth collection. I think what it is, the black and whites, the patterns, the particular shades of pink, like I don't like this bubblegum pink here. I can get behind pink when it's a softer blush color. And I also think it works wonderfully with wood grains. So I ended up backing my photos with the flowery dark print. That helped it pop more. And I propped them up in foam because I was pressing down and there was no way that those instax were going to stick to the paper and stitching layers below. The foam really helps. Time to add ephemera. You see that I picked out a journaling spot and I put it at the bottom right and then I put a tab on the top left. I try a couple more circle elements, especially the cupcakes since we were out for brunch. But with the circles in the title and the circular journal spot, I just couldn't make any other circles fit. So I place the rest of my title on and I pick out some puffy arrows, reinforcing the idea of we're looking towards the photos. But they were standing out too much, so I move on to an idea that was pretty solid in my mind when I was thinking up this layout, and that was to use a whole bunch of the little puffy heart stickers and fill in blank areas behind the layers. I really love when there are little elements peeking out from underneath. As I was playing with the little hearts, I wanted to use some of the bigger puffy hearts. And a natural place seemed to be to replace the printed heart on the journal spot with a puffy sticker and I stapled that on. I couldn't find my tweezers so I was using a paper piercer. My nails have been really short, so they weren't helpful at all. And then I found out my daughter has my tweezers because she's doing a little quilling project. I can't be mad when she's doing crafts. I think I just need to get her her own set. I'm looking at the word strips. You know I love word strips. And in this case, I'm going to choose a couple from the bigger sticker sheet. I looked at the smaller word strips, but they were really stark white. Then I spent some time just auditioning more elements, more hearts, the arrows. I finally found a spot where I liked an arrow, which is the bottom left pink paper. But everywhere else, the arrows just didn't seem to fit. I did find a second word strip that I tucked 
under the scallop and it's up against the background paper. So that one's white, but it's not super stark. You know, with the sentiments, I'm just not super lovey-dovey. <laughs> so I was being pretty picky and used them sparingly. I tried a couple sizes of envelopes, but I think because they were angular, it just didn't work with the background. But tucking in florals worked really nicely. I put them on the hollows where the instax meet up, and that just breaks apart the angularness. There was one final empty area, so I went ahead and filled that up with more puffy hearts. I had to move some around, but let's skip over to filling in the journaling card and the date, which I initially went off camera and typed and stuck on the tab. You'll see in a little bit, I'm gonna be ripping that off. But before I do that, I wanted to fill in this blank spot where the bottom of the instax, which is on the right hand side, there was a lot of white space there. So I tried out a couple things. What I really liked were the bird sticker and the chipboard stump. They had just the right shapes for that area and also one's thicker, one's thinner, and so the thicker one fit really nicely in the hollow between the two instax with the bird on top. I adored the hot air balloons in this collection and we went on a trip to Ireland where we took a hot air balloon. It was fabulous, like one of my favorite things we've ever done together. So I was trying to make that work in this layout. That's why I ended up ripping the tab off to see if maybe if that wasn't there it would fit well. And then I loaded up a whole bunch of things in the middle there and I did not like any of it. It was just too much. They're cute but they were random and it was just going to be a hot mess. So I grabbed another tab sticker that was basically the same design but a slightly bigger and it actually fits the space better. And it had a blank spot where I could actually just stamp the date in. I staple it on with a tiny attacher. That's gonna wrap up this video. I'm going to show you in real time just close-ups so you can see the dimension. I love, love, love all the dimension that you get with the folded papers and the elements peeking out from underneath and then all this stitching texture. Just love it. I hope you love it as much as I do. I hope that you enjoyed this video and it wasn't too crazy fast. As always, thanks for tuning in. Go check out the Kissing Booth collection because it's super cute. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the button down below and I will see you here next time.